she was 20 years old. She lived on those platforms. Everybody knows uh, she was constantly on her phone. And so um, we really, really need all of that information. Well, it's a mystery that is still gripping the country. College sophomore Molly Tibbetts still missing. Last seen jogging in her small town of Brooklyn, Iowa on July 18th. That was her father, Robert Tibbetts, now pleading with tech companies to help. His daughter is an avid runner. She wore a Fitbit. Her last known communication was a Snapchat she sent her boyfriend. Investigators have filed dozens of warrants for the Iowa students' social media accounts in the hopes that they will find her. Check a check of uh, Snapchat and Fitbit stocks both end of the day slightly in the green. Let's bring in attorney and the author of the upcoming book, Militant Normals. Look who's here, Colonel Kurt Schlichter. Great to see you, Kurt. Tibbetts, I mean, she, she's like a lot of students, uh, Kurt. She used social media, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. She had, a lot, you know, she had electronic devices. Can the family get that information? Well, it looks like they're doing that, Liz, and it looks like they're doing it the right way, which is going to get a warrant. You know, our lives are all over these electronics. Heck, I've got mine right here, just, to, uh, just, just within reach. And it's very important that we not only use them to help uh, people who are in danger, like, uh, uh, like her, but also to protect privacy. That's why we have warrants. That's why we have to show probable cause. Here, the probable cause is very clear, and I hope these companies cooperate fully. You know, it's a great point you make. I mean, the devices also use GPS locators or geotags. But will is it conceivable that the companies could push back because they legally don't have to reveal that information, that these are her accounts and that the family can't have access to them? Well, that's why we have warrants, Liz. Warrants require a judge to sign off that probable cause has been demonstrated. And if, if those warrants are valid, they don't really have a choice. That's how we, that's how we balance uh, the right to be secure in our papers and possessions under the Fourth Amendment. And it's a good system. Uh, a judge is obviously going to sign off on something like this. This is stuff that does, uh, is going to be able to help find her, potentially. And it also balances her privacy interest. I mean, yeah. there are people, and I'm not saying she's one of them, who don't want to be found, who don't want this information out there. This is a good way to balance it, and these companies need to cooperate once the warrant gets signed. You know what's really interesting, Kurt? Facebook is now being accused of hindering police in England. They're withholding a murder suspect's password to Facebook. Now, this involves the murder of a U.K. teen, Lucy McHugh. The police there want to get into the murder suspect's Facebook page. Facebook says they don't have his password and they can't give it. I mean, but the UK's officials there are saying, you know what, you can get into that page. You are refusing to cooperate. And Kurt, there's now calls by UK officials for a new law to force social media to disclose suspects' passwords. And let's take a check. Facebook is uh, trending down today in the red. What's your take on this story? Well, Great Britain has a different tradition regarding civil rights than the United States does. Uh, although ours descended from theirs, our, our, our protections are much greater. In England, it may be very well be possible for the police to do what they want to do, uh, even without a warrant. Here in the United States, that information is available, and that information could be obtained through a warrant. You know, Kurt, remember that big fight over the San Bernardino terrorists? who shot up that Christmas party uh, along with his wife. That was a work, a government-issued iPhone that that guy was using. Apple, even though the, the county in California said to Apple, yes, you can break into our worker's iPhone that we gave him, Apple still wouldn't do it. I mean, Silicon Valley is going to push back about privacy issues, right? Well, on passwords, yes, I think that they will push back, and that's something that we're going to have to deal with. And that's why we have courts, that's why we have legislatures, and that's why we have a constitution that sets out the framework for how we balance those. So, I mean, Liz, this is a whole new world. This isn't like when I was growing right. up. Or it's, it's going to require taking a look at these things, but we still have to protect the principles of privacy Understood. and security in our papers and possession while also realizing that things have changed. Great to see you, Kurt. Thank you so much for coming on. And say hi to your dog, Bitey. I hear all about Bitey on social media. <laughs> you should see Kurt's dog. I will, Liz. Terrific. Thank you. Good to see you.